In this tutorial, we're going to look at scaling digital audio signals uh, and using them as control signals. Uh, we have here a cycle object which is generating uh, a sine wave at 1 hertz. Uh, we know from the previous tutorial on digital audio uh, that this is generating uh, a stream of numbers between minus 1 uh, and 1, uh, which uh, over time trace the shape of a sine wave uh, with one complete cycle every second because it has a frequency of 1 hertz. And that's what we're looking at um, on this scope widget here. If I now uh, take the signal that's being generated uh, by that cycle object and multiply it by 400, that's going to give me uh, a sine wave with a maximum sample value of 400 and a minimum value of minus 400. Uh, it'll still have a 1 hertz frequency. Uh, in other words, it'll still take one second for the sample values to increase from 0 uh, up to 400, uh, back down to 0, uh, down to negative 400, and then back up to 0 again. If I now add uh, a value of 500 onto that signal, We'll have then scaled the range of values uh, to give me a sine wave with sample values ranging from 100 up to 900. So, a quick uh, recap. The original sine wave has sample values between minus 1 and 1. We multiply that by 400, thus giving us uh, a range of values between negative 400 and 400. And then finally, we add 500, resulting in a final range of values between 100 and 900. Now, we can't send that signal to the DAC for two reasons. Firstly, uh, it only has a frequency of 1 hertz, uh, which is too low to be audible anyway. Uh, secondly, the sample values, as we've just seen, uh, are way out of range for the DAC. Remember that the, uh, the DAC object only expects to convert samples uh, with values between minus 1 and 1. And obviously here we've got uh, values between 100 and 900. So if we sent that to the DAC, uh, all we would hear is, uh, well, probably nothing, and um, at best a load of distortion. We could, however, uh, use the sample values of this 1 hertz sine wave to control the frequency of another oscillator, for example. like so. That's going to give us uh, a sine wave here uh, whose frequency varies between 100 hertz and 900 hertz. Let's just hear what that sounds like. So in the example that we just heard, uh, the frequency started at 500 hertz, it then increased up to uh, 900, back down to 500, down to 100, and back up to 500 again. The change uh, followed the shape of the original sine wave, um, and uh, that cycle of pitch change happened once per second because uh, the original sine wave has a frequency of 1 hertz. If I change the frequency of the original sine wave, uh, we'll hear that that uh, change in pitch here happens at a different rate. So first of all, I'll try 0 0.5, and we'll hear a slower rate of change. And if I try uh, 2 hertz, for example, we'll hear a slightly faster rate of change. Another object that's useful to know about is the phaser object. The phaser object uh, generates a sawtooth waveform, which I can see uh, on the scope, like so. 
the phaser uh, is slightly unusual in that it generates samples in the range of 0 to 1 rather than minus 1 to 1. So we can see from the scope display here that the phaser starts at 0. It uh, increases the sample values over time up to a, a maximum value of 1, and, and then it uh, starts again at 0. Uh, and it carries out that cycle at the given frequency, in this case 1 hertz. If I now plug uh, this phaser object into the same uh, chain of objects that we used before, uh, we'll get different uh, ranges of values as we perform each of the mathematical operations. As we've already seen, we actually start out uh, with a range of values between 0 and 1. If we multiply that by 400, that will give us not minus 400, but 0 to 400. And if we then uh, add 500 to that, we will get 500 to 900 rather than 100 to 900. But the underlying uh, mathematics is obviously exactly the same. All we're doing is manipulating the values uh, of each of the samples within the source waveform. Uh, if I then use this signal to control uh, the frequency of a sine wave, uh, the main difference uh, we'll notice is that the modulation uh, has a sawtooth wave shape instead of a sine wave, which you can hear like so. In other words, uh, the frequency rises to a maximum, uh, then drops back to its minimum value instantaneously, uh, following the wave shape of the phaser object. What both of these examples have shown uh, is that audio signals can be used to control things. Uh, so in this case, we were never hearing uh, this sine wave. We were never hearing this phaser. The frequencies are too low. But what we were doing uh, was scaling the values uh, and using those sample values to control something else. Uh, the reason uh, that that works uh, is that uh, the audio streams are just streams of numbers. Uh, we can therefore scale those numbers, as we've just seen, into a range of values that's useful for some purpose or other. For example, controlling the frequency of an oscillator. What we've just seen, um, in fact, is uh, how you would implement a low frequency oscillator or an LFO um, in Max MSP. Um, and, uh, of course, I could use uh, any audio signal in this way if I wanted to. Uh, we've seen cycles and phasers. Uh, I could, for example, use sound files or any other type of waveform. Uh, since any audio signal in Max MSP is represented as a sequence of numbers, usually between minus one and one. And of course, you could ultimately use uh, these scaled values to control any parameter within your patch.